Lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am back with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you? I still need to turn the gain down on your side, because <laughs> well, you, you're to say, very loud. We, we didn't really sound check me at all. No, like. we didn't. <laughs> so, we need to see how I'm coming in. All right. That, that's am, looking, I coming, am I coming in hot? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, it's looking better. All right. Uh, did you have a Merry Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. Good. Uh, Good. Glad, glad it's all done. Sounds like you had a Merry Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the Christmas wasn't <laughs> the Christmas wasn't as merry because I had such a Merry Christmas Eve. Yeah. It was another one of those uh, trading off the day for the night before. Yeah. Um, kind of moments, but we we had a good time. And I, so the last uh, episode was um, was a, a Christmas gift to all the people that complain about our podcast not being long enough. Yes. Yeah. So, y'all, y'all definitely did a number on now? that. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. When it popped up in my queue, I was like, whoa. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to listen to that, but it's going to not be today. <laughs> and for those that think that our podcast is too long, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It was just, and I, the thing that I meant to point out at the time, because I actually rushed a little podcast out, the one I did by my myself beforehand so that that Christmas Eve episode with the with uh, Brandon and Greg would be the 200th episode or yeah. the 200th numbered episode, episode 200 yes yeah, yeah. Um, and I never mentioned it <laughs> it never came up <laughs> yeah, never mentioned it <laughs> That's um, funny. I should have written 200 real big on my notepad but I yeah. didn't happen did I it? thought surely I'll remember that um, <laughs> yeah. but there were, I don't I don't even know what that podcast was about at this point it was uh it started off um, with a little foreign policy and uh, some discussion, mostly with Brandon about economics because he's a lot younger and has a little different view, I would imagine. Yeah, um, and uh, from there, I think it kind of became three drunk guys talking. Yeah, <laughs> I don't there, know at what point that happened. Yeah, there's worse things. Yeah, so um, had fun. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed doing it. We got in trouble for not being a my mom's when we were supposed to. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know that we had a time. Actually, I had no idea what time it was. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Just completely lost track. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I knew that we'd been recording for a while, but I was having a good time. And yeah. So, just kept on going. And then, um, I when I got out of the shower, the, uh, the ladies were over it in my living room yelling at, the other two guys, well, <laughs> and then at me um, yeah. for not being where we were supposed to be. Uh, and I, but it's a good thing that came over because none of the three of us were driving. I, I back was going to say, I imagine none of y'all were in any condition, right? <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope. So at least, uh, at least we had chauffeurs in that yeah. regard. God, I hope they don't listen to this and take offense to that. I don't mean that term <laughs> in a negative way. I really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, we'd have been walking to my mom's house, which might not have been a bad idea. It's a mile and a half, roughly. So it's not that far. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's not a bad walk, and uh, probably could have walked off some of that on the way there. And yeah, it's all sidewalk actually. Now that you mention it, almost uh, very nearly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, almost. Yeah. yeah, which is a little rougher on the feet actually than just tromping through the grass. grass. But yeah, I don't know. I always feel safer on the sidewalk. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but it was a, it was a fun episode to do. Yeah. Um, maybe if there's not too terrible a reaction from our listeners, we might do something like that again. Yeah. That's sometime. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. So tell me what you think about the length, the format and the guests. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, I suppose. Yeah. So. Um, oh, and Merry Christmas. I don't think we ever said that in the podcast either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. there's, it's a little hazy. Yeah. <laughs> you may have said it a lot. <laughs> I, that could be also. Yeah. But I'm going to reiterate now. So I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and, you know, wishing everyone a happy new year. Yeah. Uh, which is just a couple of days from now. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's New Year's New, Eve. Is the New Year's Eve, yeah. 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 This is New Year's Eve Eve. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. 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 Got big plans. Shoot fireworks. That's literally my only plans. Okay. <laughs> Shoot fireworks. This is Alabama. There's essentially no restriction on fireworks here. Yeah. Oh, dude. People's been shooting fireworks all week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is kind of old news at this point, but, um, but I still want to talk about it because I think it's important. Still relevant, right? Yeah. Um, is all this work about, uh, who can be elected and who can't be elected and who's allowed in the house or Senate and who's not and so on and so on and so on that's going on. It is interesting. Like is I don't know that this is, to me, this feels like a new thing and kind of like a new theme of just removing people from elected offices and removing people from ballots. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not much of a historian. Like, is there, does, has, have we went through a cycle or a period of time where this kind of came up the way it's coming up now? Um, I don't know that anybody's been removed from a presidential ballot before. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, there have been people that have been removed from office. Yeah. But at least in the modern era, as far as I know, George Santos is the first one to be kicked out uh, without having been convicted of anything. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Like, we were talking the other day, um, kind of getting ready for this podcast, and I, I, I was just kind of thinking, I was like, you know, it just, it really seems like we're in an odd place here right now with this type of thing, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I, I'd, I'd be curious, like historically, if there's any kind of president for the precedent for that, but yeah, I, like I said, people have been, have been voted out of office before. Yeah. Um, but, but as far as I know, it, at least in the modern era, it hasn't happened without some sort of conviction. Yeah. Um, it, it hasn't, happened on just accusations yeah and the first time they tried to expel george santos okay so <laughs> let's background it <laughs> yeah, i guess let's, a little yeah, bit here we'll talk about um it. so george santos who's a representative from new york republican representative from new york was recently expelled from the house of representatives under accusations that he misused campaign funds and committed fraud related to campaign fr- uh, campaign finance yeah um which sound like crimes to me y- yes um one of them we don't really care about, and one of them we really do. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so he pled not guilty. Yeah. Um, but And they, they've tried to... They've voted before to expel him and failed, and uh, there were Republicans that voted against expelling him previously um, who voted against expelling him previously because he hadn't been convicted of anything and they thought it was a dangerous precedent to start expelling people based on accusations, which I completely agree with, by the way. Yeah. Um, this time they say that there's enough evidence in their, um, ethics committee reports in the, um, investigative subcommittee reports to go ahead and expel him. And they have. Yeah. Now he had already announced that he wasn't going to run for reelection. Yeah. Uh, he's, a he's a representative, so they're elected every two years anyway. Next year was going to be an election for him. Yeah. So less than a year from now, his constituents were going to have the opportunity to not elect him again if he decided to stay on the ballot. Yeah. And since he hasn't, then he was definitely going to be replaced. Yeah. Now I'm kind of interested in whether his constituents would have reelected him personally. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but we'll never get to find out. Yeah. Um, now in terms of what, what has happened here, um, recently a guy who worked as a fundraiser for his campaign pled guilty to wire fraud for running donor credit cards without their permission. Yeah. That that's sound, a real that, crime. That sounds like a crime. Yeah. That, that's absolutely <laughs> Definitely theft. not allowed to do that. <laughs> um, but he did not implicate George Santos in that. Yeah. Um, however, Santos's campaign treasurer, uh, Nancy Marks, pled guilty also for falsifying campaign finance forms. And Santos was implicated by emails and text messages that she turned over, suggesting that he knew what she was doing. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you don't know if he really understood that it was illegal just based on the knowledge that she turned over text messages between her and him about what she was doing. I mean, Uh, 
I've I, never I been haven't in, seen those, so I don't know. I've never been in that position, but there, I feel like as the candidate, you kind of lean on the people around you to be the knowledge as far as something like that goes. Yeah, absolutely. But, I, I mean, hated campaign finance forms, yeah, and I was terrified right? of them as well. Yeah, because like, of just this. Yeah, I feel like if I misclassify something and somebody decides to go after me in the future, there it is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but the... Uh, Things related directly to what Santos was doing, um, the House Ethics Committee, the investigative subcommittee, alleged a, I'm going to quote here from the report, mm-hmm. um, a pattern of campaign committee expenditures for travel and other personal services that may not have represented legitimate and verifiable campaign expenditures. Okay. Now, that still introduces some doubt <laughs> about this, which is why I feel like they're probably should have been a court case before an expulsion. Yeah. Uh, however, <laughs> now that said, yeah. some of these services and travel are Pretty that, that clear cut that campaign finance or campaign finances were used to to uh to pay for um were his honeymoon in Vegas, yeah. uh a stay in Atlantic City where there were no campaign or um any kind of uh, government related yeah, you gotta relax. Um, activities. Some, you gotta relax somehow, man. Um, a Hampton, a Hamptons vacation, like a, a Airbnb in the Hamptons. Yeah. Um, spa days. Now, this one I think is a legitimate campaign expenditure. By the way, <laughs> having <laughs> having run a campaign, yeah, you need a day. You need some relaxation sometimes. Like, uh, exactly. I, I think that that's perfectly reasonable, personally. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but you know. He, Paid rent with campaign finances. Uh, Gotta have somewhere to live, man. Yeah, I, it's hard to run a campaign from the street. <laughs> exactly. So, what do you expect? Yeah. Um, they also like cashed out um, uh, some campaign finances, like transferred to his personal bank accounts, did ATM withdrawals, and oh, that sounds, and so forth. That seems shady. Um, and allegedly, he used some of this cash to like uh, pay for some services on OnlyFans and like things like this. But, <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. I mean, he could have been campaigning. Uh, yeah, right. Like <laughs> those people vote too. <laughs> it's yeah, it's hard to say. Um, but the funds transfers to his personal accounts, uh, they allege that he. Um, the allegation is that he claimed that they were being used to repay personal loans to his campaign, um, but that these personal loans appear to be fabricated. Like he was paying himself back for money that he gave to the campaign that he never actually actually gave to the campaign. So, um, I mean, the guy probably is guilty. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying he's not all of, but to me, and this always irritates me, not just in this situation, but in, in like workplace settings too, where somebody hasn't been convicted of a crime. They've only been charged. And, and I've seen this, a few times in my career where somebody ends up getting fired just for being arrested. And I'm like that yeah. to me, that doesn't seem fair. Like mm-hmm. I say, I mean, I know in, in the corporate aspect, you know, they're private businesses, they can fire whoever they want. Right. But it still doesn't seem right. If you haven't been convicted of a crime yet to, to be treated as such, mm-hmm. like I just personally have a problem with that. Yeah, I agree. Um, at the same time that this has been happening, uh, there's Senator Bob Menendez, yeah, um, who's been indicted for bribery and failing to register as a foreign agent under the uh, Foreign Agents Registration Act yeah. as a sitting senator. Oh, really? Yeah. See, yeah. this I've missed completely. You were trying to get me up to speed the other day, but yeah, he. I don't, um, know, how I I'm I don't know how you missed this either. He yeah. allegedly received uh, cash, like. When they searched his house, they found almost half a million dollars in cash. Wow. Uh, like in in the liners of clothing and like all <laughs> kinds of stuff, like hidden all over. Something um, out of a movie. Gold bars, like a couple hundred thousand dollars in gold bars. Really? Uh, and if you're going to take a bribe, that it really should be in gold. Oh, I that's think. how I would take it. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, mortgage payments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so the Egyptian government in this case, like. Yeah. Through a proxy, I, I suppose, um, for the mortgage payments, like made mortgage payments for him. Yeah. Um, and other valuables, uh, like a Mercedes Benz, I think it was, or a Bentley or something like that. Some fancy luxury car. car. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and uh, compensation for a low or no show job. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I mean, I I know what that description is, but I don't know what specifically. I mean, but this is, you know, this is the kind of Hunter Biden on the board of Burisma type thing. This is a kickback thing. Yeah. 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 Um, Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, right. (laughs) Um, Well, if he hadn't been convicted. (laughs) Now, like I said, all all of this was coming from um, the Egyptian government and was supposedly for favors to the Egyptian government where he also gave them some sensitive State Department information. Um, He was protecting uh, Egyptian-owned agricultural monopoly in the U.S. He was lobbying uh, within the Senate, like um, opening bills to send more uh, financial aid to the Egyptian government, etc. All right. Um, I mean, this all you're laying out a pretty good case here, I'm just saying. Well, he's still in the Senate. (laughs) But, (laughs) but... Yeah. He has stepped down from his role as, since this came out, yeah. he has stepped down from his role as chair of the Foreign Relations Committee. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't know how I've missed this. This no. is insane. No. Wow. Um, and so our, our boy Fetterman, who and sometimes we have some questions about his judgment, yeah. has actually really advocated strongly for kicking him out of the Senate, too. And yeah. when he was asked about uh, George Santos being expelled from House of Representatives, he was like, we got our own problem in the Senate, and, and it's this guy Menendez, who is a Democrat. Yeah, so it's his own party then. Yeah, yeah. and wow. he's like, I don't think he should be, we should be getting him out of here, too. Like, this is a guy who is acting as a foreign agent while a sitting member of the uh, of the Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah. So all that's gone on. Menendez, however, is still in office, and uh, and a free Santos man. Like, I mean, he definitely yeah. seems like. I mean, the case you laid out, like he should be in jail. Like, I guess at some point he will be, right? Yeah. I mean, he's been indicted. <laughs> uh, he's tried to push off the trial. Um, yeah. It's supposed to be in May, I think. Okay. Um, and he's tried to push it off to July. Yeah. I don't know why exactly. There's probably some kind of timing about elections that. <laughs> yeah. that's affected by that but i don't know yeah you don't want to be going to trial while you're running for election right yeah exactly <laughs> it gets in the way it gets in the way yeah. so so i hear it seems like this is coming up a lot lately yeah but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly um so yeah that's that's just kind of that's some of the things that are going on now yeah me personally i um i'm not necessarily opposed to george santos being tossed out for allegations okay uh, I, like, I think, however, that if you're going to do that, if you have, you know, uh, credible allegations of misconduct by these guys that are in elected offices of government, um, that I think it's, a, I understand why you would kick them out. I just wish it was applied across the board. Yeah. So if you're going to kick out somebody like Santos for the allegations, you should kick out somebody like Menendez for what I think are much worse allegations yeah, about I what mean, he was doing. The, the, yeah. There's a, between the two of those, one is different from the other. Mm-hmm. Like one is way more serious. Yeah. As far as I can tell. Now, ideally, uh, the <laughs> for me, ideally, you would just have immediate recall in all of these states. And so, if the constituents were upset enough about these allegations or what might have been going on by the people that represent them that they can remove them themselves. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the true answer here. Like Mm -hmm. if you wanted to get really get to the bottom of this and get, put a system together that would, would function properly. Yeah. That's how it would work. The problem is, is the powers that be know that, don't want the people to have that type of power that mm-hmm. once they do something, they, they can immediately act on it because part of the game they play is they do all the stuff that, that people aren't going to, they, they assume people aren't going to remember a year from two years from now. Right. Especially they, senators. Cause they have the six year terms. Yeah. It, with a six year term, like what they do at the first half of that term is going to be forgotten by the time they're elected again mm-hmm. or running again. Yeah. So, um, like I say, that's that's the fear from the powers that be. But yeah. um, now the other side of it uh, is that these are elected representatives of their constituents. I think those are the people that should be deciding whether they're in office or not. Oh, absolutely. Um, these institutions are not private clubs. Um, where the members get to choose who else is a member. Like <laughs> yeah, that, right. <laughs> that's not how this is supposed to work. In yeah. fact, our system was ex- explicitly designed to avoid that. 
Yeah. I mean, that's essentially an aristocracy, right? Like, yeah. Um, so, or, you know, an oligarchy, which is what we really live in anyway, but, <clears throat> um, or an oligarchic fascist state or something. <laughs> I, I think that's probably really weird. I feel like really fascism should be in there somewhere. That's, like, I think that's really where we are, but, yeah. um, uh, but anyway, that, that's the the argument that I would make against them expelling Santos is that is that these the House of Representatives is not a private club, yeah, um, where they get decide get to decide who the members are. Those people are supposed to be representatives of their constituents, and their constituents selected them. And if their constituents want them out, that's who should be deciding, not the other members. Absolutely, there should be no uh, none of this. Well, we don't like this guy, so we're getting rid of him. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to do it that way, I don't necessarily have a problem with it if you have strong strong support for allegations that are, you know, severe misconduct, especially as related to your power as a government official. Yeah, right. Um, but if you're going to do that, it should be applied to everybody. Yeah. Now, I think they're all corrupt. I So I think that if you really did, like, strictly apply that to everybody, we wouldn't have very many people left. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which I would that be might okay be a good with. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. it might be a good thing. Yeah. Um, at a higher level, um, Colorado and Maine have now kicked Trump off of those states' primary ballots uh, for 14th Amendment violations related to January 6th. Yeah. So um, for allegedly uh, leading an insurrection or being involved in an insurrection against the United States. Now, this is a... <laughs> the amendment itself was written after the Civil War to prevent people who had taken an oath to the Constitution and then separated, had seceded from the Union um, to help form the Confederate States from seeking re-election into the federal, until federal office once the Union was restored. Yeah, so we don't want these guys back in here again. They've kind of caused enough trouble. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming is what, what we're looking at here. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the fact that it's being applied here is just so strange well, anyway, besides the fact that not only has there not been a conviction for any kind of insurrection against Trump for January 6th, he hasn't even, been charged. There's not charges, no. With anything not, like that. Because because you can't, it'll be laughed out of court. Yeah, they, there's no way that they could prove that. They, they, yeah, it's just the evidence just isn't there. But the Colorado Supreme Court in a 4-3 to three decision decided that they could were sure of it. Yeah, well. <laughs> and so eliminated Trump from the from the primary ballot. And yeah. and actually, that's another thing that I have a problem with anyway. What does the state have to do with primary ballots at all? Primary ballots are are actually um, elections for Through. private clubs. Yeah. So, and I'm, the Republican Party and the Democrat Party are not themselves a part of our government. Well, see, I've never understood that anyway. How that, even like down here in the South where we're at, like, why is it that we do these elections for the parties through the state? Like, I've never understood that why the state holds those elections because they don't hold it for the libertarians. Yeah. Well, it's so that they can use our money instead of theirs. Yeah. I mean, that's the answer. Really. I mean, I guess it is. Yeah. Um, and to, and it's probably just as much to give the appearance that, that, that that's the official position. Yeah. That, these, that, that the these Republicans are two, and the Democrats the two are your choices. Official parties. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because we live in a two party system. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, so I have a problem with the state running these things anyway. And so. Uh, as private clubs, the state shouldn't have any say in whether and who gets on the ballot for primary elections. Also, the state shouldn't be funding them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and maybe that's the answer to the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, there's been um, a, a counter, uh, a reaction um, by some of the GOP uh, state governments um, or member GOP members of state governments filing bills in... Um, Georgia, Arizona, and Pennsylvania that I know of, yeah, uh, where state representatives drafted bills to remove uh, Joe Biden from the ballot, also citing the 14th Amendment um, of giving comfort or aid to an enemy of the United States for his connections with the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. 
Which, uh, honestly, to me, that one lines up better than the one against Trump. Yeah, it probably does in a lot of ways, except that who's an enemy of the United States? Yeah. The United States isn't officially at war. With anybody. Well, with I anyone. Know. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, no, we well, declared... well, with anyone, you're right. Because, yeah, yeah haven't we declared haven't war actually since World declared war, war. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we may be bombing a bunch of folks, but... <laughs> so seeing somebody as a strategic rival... Yeah, is different than a declared enemy. Yeah, yeah. that's not an enemy of that. Like, how, how do you statutorily define an enemy of the United States? The only way I can think of that seems fair yeah. is uh, a nation with whom we are at war. Yeah. No, I, I'd agree with that. Officially at war. Declared yeah. war. Declared war, yeah. Um, otherwise, they're just people we don't like. Yeah. For whatever reason. Well, and when you say we don't like, that's kind of subjective, too. Because, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, because like what the people that one party don't like won't necessarily be the same as the other party. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, at that point, you're just drilling it down to like who holds the ring, you know? Yeah, so that one's a thin ice uh, interpretation also. I agree. Now, they say that they're just trying to make a point. Um, and that's what here. it really boils down to. But uh, but Colorado and Maine have actually thrown Trump off the ballot for yeah. the Republican primary in their states. That's it's it's wild times we live in. I mean it, and it really is irritating. The thing that irritates me is that these are the same people who are try, claiming they're trying to save democracy. Well, yeah, I mean there's uh, there's a something really interesting about the idea that the people can't be trusted to vote correctly. So in order to save democracy, we got to remove some people from the ballot. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, <laughs> think of the elitist. Uh, worldview that that represents too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you know this idea that uh, that if we give you all of the options, you'll probably choose the wrong one, and we can't have that. Exactly. I mean, you would you would uh, vote for your own execution. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I, I think. I don't know. I. I have some questions about the general intelligence of people. I'm oh, not yeah. going to lie. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a bit of an intellectual elitist too, but. Um, the difference, I guess, is that I don't think that because of that, I get to tell people how to live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I still don't think that I have a right to, to make decisions for others. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but they do. I mean, this is a, like, I was, um, listening to my, uh, voice memos, um, on my phone yesterday, I guess it was, cause I, I got a new phone for Christmas and I don't know that the backups and all that um, do voice memos because I think I lost my voice memos when I changed phones before. Oh, I don't know. Um, so I was listening through them to see what was important that I might need to keep for one reason or another. And um, I had some voice memos and notes that I made to myself when I was researching the Vietnam stuff before I did that podcast like uh, earlier this year. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things was about how in South Vietnam... Um, they had not wanted to hold an election, but then the, the U S pressed South Vietnam to hold an election because they didn't think that they could get the U S taxpayer essentially, um, to support a war on the side of, uh, of a country that wasn't holding elections. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of interesting because we got the same thing going on in Ukraine right now, right? But But um, the difference is, is today people just don't pay that much attention. Well, I guess that's true. Uh, although, the, you know, that has been one of the criticisms of the Ukraine stuff is that, like, yeah. you know, we went into this to save democracy in Ukraine, but he's canceled other political parties and canceled elections. So yeah. what are we really paying for here? And so yeah. on. So uh, at least somebody's talking about that. It is coming up. Yeah. Um, but what they had done in South Vietnam is they held an election um, between the guy that they wanted and the previous guy that the, the French... Uh, uh, colonialists had supported yeah. who wasn't even in Vietnam anymore. He was <laughs> in France and, um, they outlawed, uh, people campaigning for him. And then they put him on a green ballot, which is, um, traditionally, uh, a color, a bad omen color yeah. in Vietnam and put the guy that they wanted on a red ballot, which was a good omen color. Yeah. Um, so they did all these things to rig the election and ended up, you know, the guy claiming 98.2% of the vote for in his favor <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Well, and they said, and the New York Times said this is a, a triumph of democracy. Try, yeah, right. Yeah. 
Well, or in, something in, like in that. that respect, it is. But I mean, Saddam Hussein had elections. Like, I mean, yeah. he was he was voted in every time. Like, they have elections in North Korea too. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, um, well, it just shows you how good democracy is, doesn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> So I'm not here to, to be a big advocate for democracy. Uh, what I'm the big advocate for is that it's not your place to, you don't have any right to tell other people how to live. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, right. That's, that's what I'm the advocate for. Um, it doesn't matter how decisions are, are, whether they're made with a vote or some other way, as long as nobody is coerced or oppressed. Yeah. Right. So, um, and of course that can really only be done on a small scale. Because yeah. you, you can't put too many people together that all agree yeah, it's on how to live their lives. Yeah. I mean, that was like expressly the purpose of establishing this podcast is that, you know, the idea that, um, that we don't think anyone should be able to tell others uh, how to live. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I, I get really frustrated with this elitist viewpoint that... Um, you know, well, if we if we don't limit the options, they're just not going to choose right. Yeah. And we know what's best for everybody, and so we will give them the options that as long as they choose among these options, they'll get what's best for them. As long as they choose between Joe Biden and Nikki Haley, then we know that the world yeah. will keep going the way it's supposed to go. Yeah. Which really is what's so crazy. Like, I just... The fact that Donald Trump is this unique evil yeah. is just like insane to me. Mm -hmm. He was think. he was really ineffective in office too. Oh yeah, he, you know all the things. He, that, even besides you, them you trying think to this railroad guy him, who couldn't even end a war effectively while he was in office yeah. is going to stop future elections and so on. I mean the <laughs> yeah. some of the things some of the claims that are being made about what Donald Trump would do if he. Was well, voted into office again are just so insane. Well, and it's, some of the stuff is all rehashed from 2016. Well, that's true. Um, like, I mean, it's not like it's a new narrative, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, they they they're rolling the same things out again. Yeah. Well, and and say what you will about you know he disrupted allegedly. Oh, yeah. Disrupted the peaceful transfer of power because of January 6th. He did but he leave. left office. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, left office on he, January twentieth, like he was supposed he to. He was kind of a dick about it, but he did sure. it. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't expect it any other way no, from he, Donald Trump. Exactly. But, but he did leave. You know. Yeah. Um. It's I, it, it's incredible to me that people are so upset about the things he said, rather than the things that he did. Yeah. And that for whatever reason. That makes him worse than a George W. Bush. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. I'm intentionally picking somebody from the same party so that there's no yeah. partisan aspect of this. Yeah. But like what George W. Bush did while he was in office did a whole lot more to unravel democracy or a free state in this country than what Donald Trump did. Well and I like I can go on and on about Bush. I mean, a lot of what we're dealing we with time. with right now <laughs> is due to the George Bush presidency. I mean, when you look back at the war in Iraq and Afghanistan and just straight up bankrupting this country, like that falls directly on George Bush. Yeah, in the Patriot Act and the FISA. Patriot Act, I mean, like you yeah. want to talk about worst presidents of all time? I hadn't really thought about it until you mentioned his name, but I'm like, dude, he's like right there. Yeah, like uh, I by, still say it's Woodrow Wilson, but well, yeah, I mean, and, and you're right to say so, but like it, for sure in my lifetime. Oh yeah, like there, I don't think there's much question. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I mean, uh, Obama was bad on the things that matter most to me. Yeah, uh, because he he started so many more wars. Yeah. Um, but the truth is he just continued the policy of George W. Well, I was going to say, but you remove Bush from that equation. I think mm -hmm. it's because just like you said, he continued Bush's policies yeah. and then just added on top of them. But Bush got mm -hmm. things rolling. Yes. Yeah, he um, did. Um, and, uh, and for Obama, I can at least say he did the JCPOA. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, this is a bit of an aside, but I, I heard, um, I heard a news clip recently. It was probably on the No Agenda show with this guy uh, saying he's making an excuse for something. Um, oh, it was an excuse for why 
uh, the U.S. hasn't reacted more strongly against the Houthis uh, for attacking shipping. Yeah. Um, and he was saying the reason is because Houthis are Iranian proxies, which isn't really true, but um, whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to make <laughs> gonna that case point, right now. Yeah. It's not really the issue. Yeah. Um, but his point was, you know, Houthis are Iranian proxies, and uh, Joe Biden still wants to uh, restart the JCPOA, which is the Iran nuclear uh, agreement for those that don't know the acronym. Yeah. Um, it's the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Yeah. But it's the uh, Iran nuclear agreement. Um, and he said, you know, the reason that we're not reacting against the, the Houthis and just crushing them is because, um, it is because he wants to restart the JCPOA. What evidence does he have to support that? I don't know, because Joe Biden could have done that on day one in I, office that's what if he actually say. wanted to do like, it. That, there's no, there's, I, I've seen no evidence mm -hmm. that he, that's what he wants to do. He piled a bunch of stuff on top of it. He wanted to make a new, stronger agreement. Yeah. But if he had just wanted to enter the JCPOA, he could have. Yeah, absolutely. It, it would have been no problem. Yeah. Um, at that time, I Iran had just been like stepwise going through their um, agreed-upon responses to somebody else breaking the contract, yeah. which was... Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Who broke the contract. Um, so yeah, I don't know where he's getting that from besides the fact that the, the war in Yemen between Saudi Arabia and the Houthis is a direct result of signing the JCPOA in the first place <laughs> because yeah. Obama agreed to the Saudis war in Yemen and provided support to it to placate the Saudis after making the agreement with Iran uh, oh. For the nuclear thing, okay, um, and uh, and but even once we broke the treaty, we continued to support the Saudis and Yemen. Yeah, yeah. So, like, <laughs> uh. I, I, yeah, I don't know where he's, I don't know where he's getting that idea. No, that that, that doesn't drive that. I mean, not from what I've seen, at least. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it seems to me that if you really, if they actually. I mean, maybe the answer is that if they actually re-agreed to the JCPOA, then we would blow the hell out of the Houthis because that we, we would need to placate the Saudis again. Again, right? Yeah. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I was just, I was, I was very confused by his remarks, and yeah. uh, I think that it's just um, ludicrous. Yeah. So any No Agenda listeners that listened to that and were like, oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't think so. No, nah, yeah. <laughs> they hadn't seen anything to support that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know what more to say about this. We can we can keep this kind of a short episode because we've like clumped a bunch of episodes together. Besides, I don't want to distract you from the three and a half hour <laughs> yeah, right. uh, thing. Like, you know. They, well, for they, me personally, I don't have to re-listen to this one, but I got to go listen to the three and a half hour one. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So yeah, you should. There's probably something good in there. That's, that's on my list. It's in, <laughs> it's in the queue. I, I wasn't sure if the uh, the subtitle of Alcohol is the Devil would entice more people to listen to <laughs> or turn more people away. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, well, well, we're in the South down here, so. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. It could, it could go either way. <laughs> um, so I, I guess what we're looking at is, uh, I mean, it, it seems to me that, and I think you said this to me, is like, that what we're looking at here as they try and remove people from the ballot, as the system itself tries to um, control itself, yeah. I suppose, um, only get the people in office that they want in office um, to maintain the elitist control, um, that actually their claim that they're trying to avoid a constitutional crisis may be leading to a constitutional crisis. Yeah, because this, this actually, I mean, at the end of the day, the Supreme Court's going to step in and strike all of this down. And probably. Probably. probably mm -hmm. And we'll kind of move on from this point. But, but barring that, like if we didn't have, if that didn't happen, um, kind of like you're alluding to that, you know, if the Supreme Court like upholds some of these or something like that, like we are heading for a constitutional crisis because we can't we can't play this game of where this person can run, but this person can't mm -hmm. because the same thing with impeachment, which I still stand by my statement that I think every president from here forth will be impeached. I oh, think yeah. <laughs> I think Biden is will be impeached and I think whoever is president after Biden will be impeached. 
Um, that's that's a new norm, and we really can't accept the norm that we just let some people run and some people don't. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we already do that to a degree, and so the the Democrats and the Republicans are on every state ballot everywhere all the time. Yeah. yeah. E- for every single office. Yeah. If they want to be. Oh yeah. Um, if they have a candidate to fill it, they're there. Yeah. Uh, well. Um, other parties have to jump through a bunch of hoops to even be listed on ballot, even for like county elections and oh, things yeah. like that. Yeah, I know firsthand that's a mess. <laughs> yeah, some states are worse than others, and Alabama's one of the worst. It's the worst, yeah. Um, no, it's not the worst, but it it's... It feels it's, like it's the worst. I know, when you're actually out there try, like, trying to collect signatures and all that, it does feel yeah. pretty bad. But but we're not the worst, Yeah, just one of the worst. Okay. We're probably in the top 20%, yeah. top 10 states. Okay. Um, at any rate... So they, they already do this to a degree. They just haven't yeah. done it to their own up until now. Yeah. Um, yeah, this has a different feel, though. Like, mm-hmm. especially with it being... It, we're not even talking the party here. We're talking, like, individual people. Yeah. Like, you can't have this position. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like I say, it just it has has a feel to it. But I, I'm Well, pretty, I see an opening here, though. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to be, like... Optimistic? Like, yeah, optimistic about that. Like, yeah. maybe... There will be a real breakdown, and dozens of states will eliminate one or the other major party candidate from their ballots. Yeah. Um, and that that could create an opening for a third party like the Libertarian Party to step in and get a whole bunch of votes, or at least get enough votes so that they don't have to fight through all the hoops for the, again to for get, the next election. For the next election. Well, I will say this, um, and this is something else I was kind of just thinking about through the week. Like, for us as a country, media even in the last four years, has changed so much. Like, you talk to, even your older, I don't, I hate using the term, but you're like boomer type, um, like, people. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody trusts the system anymore, and nobody trusts the media in particular anymore. Um, from, From people our age, down and up, like, across the board. And that means something. Like, so the idea that you're talking about like a libertarian being able to like sneak in through a ballot access thing, like it's possible. Like uh, if you had like a really strong libertarian candidate, it doesn't even have to be a libertarian, but third party candidate. Mm -hmm. Like I I think the opening is there because so many people have turned to alternative media and just think that the mainstream media is just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hopefully they're just they're, they're eating their own here and creating problems for themselves in the future. Hopefully yeah. the the elitist system by trying to maintain itself, like the um, the line for uh, from Star Wars, from the original Star Wars, where um, Leia's talking to uh, Moff Tarkin, I guess it is that. I might have that name wrong, so the <laughs> Star Wars nerds are gonna like <laughs> go on the attack. Yeah, and Michael at the Liberty Mike, you can correct me; it's fine. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she says, uh, "Yeah, it's got to be Tarkin because it's in the line, right?" She says, "The more you tighten your grip, Tarkin, the more star systems will slip through your fingers." Yeah, and that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, and we'll see. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> I, I think we're witnessing it now. Like, there's a reckoning coming, and mm-hmm. I don't know that it's going to be necessarily this election. Although this election looks crazy, yeah. Um, but they always feel like. I mean, it's always the biggest election of our lifetime. Mm-hmm. Like every election is the biggest election of our lifetime. I, um, I've, I've actually come up with a justification for that too. Okay. Uh, the every election is the most important election of our lifetime because. Um, between every election, the uh, government accumulates so much more power yeah. <laughs> that it matters that much more who's in that office. Well, and, and there is something to that mm-hmm. because the government doesn't contract. It only gets bigger, mm-hmm. um, which is another thing that's wild, um, especially when you think about like conservatives who like their whole thing is small government. No, it's but, not. <laughs> well, I mean, it's supposed to be. I mean, I know it's not, but like that's they a, a conservative on the ground, not an elected, mm. but like the, a person who votes conservative, that's what they're going to tell you. Yeah, like, probably. Low not, taxes. Yeah, exactly. Small government. But you never get that. No. Nah. Like, when have you ever gotten that from any of them? Um, Again, it, not in my lifetime. Exactly. So, and people recognize that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I think there's an opening for the Libertarian Party because when we say we want to cut government, we mean it. Yeah. 
Um, so to all you conservatives out there, like mm-hmm. if you really want to start reducing government, like we're the guy. Yeah. Like, Look into the Libertarian Party. You may not agree with all of our platform, but you'll see that we're serious about cutting back government spending, cutting yeah. back government power, cutting back departments, eliminating all this excess. Exactly. Um, and we're serious about bringing the troops home. Oh yeah. That's a, that's another for real one for us. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like there's a reckoning coming. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know that it'll be better, but something, things are changing. Yeah. This, this election does seem like it's going to be crazy. Um, I don't know that there's anything they're trying their best, but I don't know that there's anything they can do to prevent it from being a rematch. Yeah. And, um, well, I don't think there's, there's anything they can do to prevent Trump from being the nominee and, and whatnot. I I don't, I still don't see Biden making it mm-hmm. through a primary. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, cause it's so crazy. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But I just don't see it. Like I, the Democrats, there's no, he doesn't have enough support amongst his own base to, to be the guy. Yeah. But what else are they going to do? I don't know, but I'm, I, I just calling it right here, something they're going to do something. And I don't know. You're right. I don't know what that is, but, yeah. um, I mean, I, as long as he's alive and says he wants to run, I don't think that they can I don't stop think that him they from can, being the candidate. I don't think that they can stop him either, but I'm, I just, I just have that feeling something is gonna, something's going to shake this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Might so. be. Um, uh, we'll see what happens. I, I think it's. I think it is a real opportunity to kind of, hopefully, fracture the the two party dominance yeah. um, in this country. And I, I think that the well, that's what we're uh, me in particular. I mean, that's what we're rooting for. Yeah. You know? so. And I I think that the um, the way that they're approaching this, the attempts to try and prevent Trump from running at all again. Yeah. Uh, I think ha- are souring a lot of people. I yeah. mean, there's people that absolutely hate Trump. There's nothing that's going to change about them. They believe yeah. everything that's being said about him because he's terrible. And yeah. he is terrible. I don't deny that. Yeah. Um, but uh, the um, the undecideds and the Republicans that like Trump uh, just see this as a, an, uh, as a political persecution. Yeah. And, and I mean, will they see it for what it is? Yeah. Well, there's I mean, definitely a strong case to be made. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try not to take a side in this, although um, I, I think that the idea of preventing somebody you don't like from running for office, if if he's so terrible, let him run. I mean, yeah. even Gavin Newsom uh, apparently recently said, like, we beat people on the ballot here. Yeah. Like, um, and rejected any attempts um, to remove by him. the state to remove him from yeah. the ballot. Now, the truth is in California, like that's a smart political move by yeah. Gavin Newsom yeah. because he doesn't seem like a spoiled child. Yeah. Um, he's, he seems like he's being uh, nonpartisan and fair yeah. when the truth is that California is something like 75% Democrat. So it doesn't really matter whether Trump's on the ballot or not. Yeah, that's true. Um, but still, yeah. uh, I mean, it's nice for the biggest Democrat state in the country to, to and and one of the more popular governors to make a say, statement like so that. So where is California on that whole ranking as far as ballot access is concerned? I'm not sure, actually. I don't know I either. haven't looked at it in a long I'm, time. I'm just, I've, it made me think about it. Because I, I don't have to worry about getting on the ballot in California. Yeah, well, that's a problem I'll never have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably so, me too. Yeah. A um, lot would have to change. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, before I was worried about getting on the ballot in California. Yeah. So, so. Um, well, I was. I had another like little topic that we could discuss for a moment, but we're you know, like we've overloaded people. I've overloaded people <laughs> yeah. recently. Um, and uh, here we go, episode two hundred one, last episode of twenty twenty three. Oh, yeah. I guess we won't get another one out before New Year's. But hopefully we'll be back on a normal schedule next week. God, I hope so. Um, well, I wouldn't give for a normal schedule yeah, again. I know. <laughs> I know. So um, Thursday or Friday, we should get out another episode. Yeah. 
and uh, and then be back on track into 2024. Yep. And so, um, of course, you can always help us out by uh, liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, reviewing, etc. On send Mike an email. <laughs> send me an email, Michael at thelibertymike.com. I don't know that that helps us in terms of reach so much, but I appreciate feedback. Absolutely. And um, so, uh, yeah. And then our platforms are iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, Facebook. Is that it? I think so. And then, of course, there's our website, uh, thelibertymike.com. There's always that, until they ban That's us from it. It's always available. Um, and there's some interesting stuff on there, um, if, you, if you're if you willing to poke around a little bit. And then I've got things broken down into podcasts and articles as well. Of course, there's, a, I mean, it's a typical blog. It's like main pages, just going back and order everything that we've put out, pretty yeah. much. Um, but there is, you know, there are tabs for articles and uh, articles only and podcast only, and then there's some about stuff that I think is kind of interesting. You should read. You should, yeah. you should know your hosts better. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but we'll be back next week when we finally get this right, and in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.